You're listening to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Visit our website for free resources to aid you in your pursuit of self-liberation. Old Vanu publications, podcasts, guest articles, and much more. Go to vanupodcast.com. And now, your hosts, Shane and Jason. Welcome to the Vani Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to coercion. I'm your host, Shane. This podcast present on the website is covered by BIPCOT's No Government License, so as reuse and modification to anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. So, no, we would never report you for copyright violations or get your YouTube channel removed for sharing this important information, even if you're making money off of it. Uh, one note real quick. Uh, please stay tuned to the very end of this podcast to hear our Building the Agora series, wherein we highlight great Agora's businesses and podcasts that you uh, will want to check out. So today I'm joined by Jeff Paquette, uh, host of the Gas Man Report, and the gentleman who was targeted by the organizers of Anarcho Polco for filming and sharing videos uh, from the conference uh, on YouTube. So I'll let him tell his story, uh, but since we've done a couple episodes on the alleged anarchist community in Acapulco already, uh, I figure this would make for a good conclusion uh, of the series. Uh, it also provides another example of why I dislike much of the anarchist libertarian community, uh, but yeah, there will certainly be uh, more on that later. Uh, so Jeff, uh, first off, welcome to the Vani Podcast, uh, sir. How, how are things going? Good, Shane. Thanks very much for having me on. Hey, not a problem, not a problem. And I guess I'll just preface this by saying I spent uh, about a month and a half in Acapulco um, from November to December last year. Um, so we did, we've done a couple episodes on the subject, or not, not on this subject, obviously, but um, I guess uh, more general, general issues uh, going on with the community there in Acapulco. So um, I'm really excited to hear, uh, hear your story and, and also your experiences there at the conference. Uh, I was going to attend, um, but, uh, you know, life happened, didn't, uh, you know, wasn't, uh, wasn't able to, to get back there. So um, and now I, I definitely won't be, uh, <laughs> I definitely won't be attending. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, why don't you uh, start by uh, introducing yourself? Uh, who are you? Uh, what do you do? And, uh, I guess, uh, how long have you been uh, an anarchist? Um, well, yeah, so my name is, uh, Jeff. I'm actually, uh, I run a small, uh, HVAC, HVAC company here in, uh, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Mm. I've been doing that for about uh, 15 years. And I guess I've always kind of had an anarchist mindset. I think most uh, small business owners do eventually, especially when you start paying attention to, you know, the tax situation and just uh, the red tape and everything. Uh, so, yeah, I've been doing that for yeah 15 years approximately. And I would say I started kind of digging into, you know, conspiracies and anarchism and all these different different types of things maybe four or five years ago and really started going harder into it the last year or two uh, to the point where I thought that I was you know my path was not clear anymore uh, running my company um, I thought you know maybe I can I could help wake people up and you know that's I'm sure you're aware that that's uh, sometimes a difficult difficult thing to do so I'm kind of got my foot in two worlds right now and at the moment I'm actually concentrating pretty hard on my business uh, spring springs here so um, it's uh, it's busy busy time of year and obviously um, I've been banned permanently from YouTube so that that career which I mean it wasn't really a career choice per se it was I was kind of doing it as a hobby um, and it's funny that you mentioned at the beginning about making money off the videos. It, it was actually the complete opposite for me. I, my channel was never going to be monetized. Um, um, so yeah, I wasn't, you know, at, at some point I might've converted to, you know, selling t-shirts or something, but I was really just trying to give back and, and just try to help, you know, humanity kind of awaken. Sure. Uh, um, you know, cause I'm, I'm sure you're the writing on the wall that we were running for uh uh you know things get pretty serious i think that's my opinion anyways yeah yeah i, I definitely agree. um do you want me to continue uh, what was that go ahead sorry go oh, ahead no sorry no problem uh so i i guess um yeah and that's that's really unfortunate i mean just the this entire uh you know the entirety of what happened was was this really bad situation but now you're banned from youtube but like i said we'll get we'll get into that more um but you know even if it's just a side hustle sure. or a hobby um 
I mean, it's still it's it's still it's it's still the largest video sharing platform out there. So I mean, you you kind of lose uh, um, you, you lost quite a bit there. Um, you lost quite a bit there. So um, anyway, I guess. Um, Tell us a bit about, uh, or I guess there's one thing I want to touch on because uh, I, I, I came to anarchism from a conspiratorial background uh, myself. Um, so I guess, uh, could, you, uh, could you speak a little more to that? Uh, like, uh, who did you listen to? What uh, you know, did you kind of look into? What were the things that kind of uh, uh, really, really st uh, struck you that set you on this path? Well, for sure. I, I mean, the first thing, like, I, I could probably look back all the way to 2001, 9-11. Obviously, that's a big one. Um, you know, and I, I knew there was something up with that rate, rate when I saw it, when I was, you know, I don't know how old I was. It wasn't that old, but, um, um, but then again, I was, I was running my business and, you know, like things were good. I was busy. I was building a business and, um, and it just, it seemed like the more that, the more I worked, the harder I worked, the more I was taxed, the more I just was like, this is not, you know, so that's why I started looking into other things. And it would have been, I actually lost a big contract and that's where I found myself with all this time on my hands. Um, and probably at first I spent the time not in good ways, but luckily I was smart with my money when I was younger and I saved and invested in, you know, uh, retirement and, and like TFSAs we have here in Canada and all these, you know, investments. So I had some breathing room to kind of just do what I wanted to do for about a year. Um, so that's, you know, kind of, I went down all these rabbit holes and just started, uh, you know, going pretty deep into different things. And the way my mind works, I can kind of, you know, see those bigger pictures and connect dots and then you find something else and you just keep going. And, you know, even I did the whole Alex Jones phase and I thought, oh man, this guy's right on the money. Of course, I woke up to a lot of the controlled opposition. I can mm -hmm. keep waking up to a lot of, you know, a lot of people that just, you know, if I keep digging and that's what I keep doing, is I'm never set in certain truth ever um so i just the more i look into these people it's just it's it's, it's hard to, to see that people aren't controlled um um so even even like an anarchist i guess like in them in most uh senses i am an anarchist um but i i have a hard time labeling myself with any kind of label um so, you know, like, you know, even at home, I would consider myself a socialist uh, with my family. Uh, so it, it really depends. But like for business and like in general, I am pretty much an anarchist. Um, um, and even, you know, thinking back on my business, like I've never even I've never even signed a contract with a customer. It's basically I'm kind of like an old school, just like, you know, a handshake is is your word. That's a contract for me. For um, and that's kind of how I've lived my life. So, so now I still, you know, I still run my business. There's still, I can't, you know, I guess I could, but, uh, it, for me, it's not worth, um, the, the, the fight of going, you know, complete anarchy with no rules or no, uh, you know, obviously I'm in a trade that, uh, requires licensing and all this stuff. I don't agree with a lot of it because a lot of it's just baloney red tape and, um, right. and this and that. So. I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly what I label myself, but I, I have a hard time putting any certain label. But I definitely am drawn to the anarchist community, um, you know, the true anarchists, like you said, uh, because I've discovered a lot, or say they're anarchists or libertarians or whatever, and when you really dig a little deeper, um, you know, they still have some statist mindsets. So oh, for sure, for sure, hope and that I, gives a bit. Oh. Yeah. yeah, you know, I'm right there with you with the labels. And I just interviewed a, a smuggler, uh, author of second round book on strategy um, a couple days ago. And we were talking about uh, his transition. He used to call himself an anarcho capitalist, and he doesn't anymore. Uh, okay, uh, you're still there? Okay, I'm going to drop for a second. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'm here. But uh, he was talking about it like it was kind of his, uh, you know, kind of uh, leaving the anarcho capitalist uh, sphere. And I have my, my own reasons for it. And he, he kind of uh, responded by saying, well, you know, Unfortunately, like uh, anarcho-capitalism just, uh, I don't know, it's a, it gives people an excuse to be jerks. Um, a lot of people like that have that label, you know, if you have, if you have a lot of money in anarcho-capitalist anarcho society, you can pretty much, uh, you know, be as much of an asshole to anyone as you want to because, um, you know, that's just, that's just how it is. Um, so, um, he said, obviously not everyone, but, um, yeah. but still, you know, I, I do see that from, from quite a few folks that, uh, that's, you know, um, 
hold that label. Um, now yeah. I've, I've kind of uh, withdrawn from the anarcho capitalism thing. I just basically just go with free market anarchists now, or I'm uh, probably more relevant to the, to this podcast and more relevant to my life of a new one. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, labeling is a, a tricky thing. And, uh, you know, if you label yourself right along with other people, you kind of get dragged into their, to their nonsense, uh, when they start being inconsistent and doing, uh, things contrary to, uh, you know, the, the ideology, at least, uh, in my opinion. So, um, I guess, uh, I'd like to hear your, your experiences, uh, you know, at Anarchapulco. Um, now, yeah, like I said, I spent a month and a half there in Acapulco. Didn't really, um, <clears throat> spent some time, I, I, I did, I did spend some, uh, spend some time with, uh, the community members there. Um, never saw any of the bigger ones, uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, n never saw any of the, uh, I guess the, the bigger folks. Um, but, um, right. I'm curious, uh, you know, how, how, how do you like Anarchapulco? Well, I'll, I'll go back a little bit because it kind of relates to the label thing too. So, so my first channel that I actually I, I started it in January uh, of 2019. I was actually down in the states. I, I won some tickets to go to the Bitcoin conference in Miami uh, at the beginning of January. So I went. I flew down for a week uh, by myself because uh, my wife was busy with work. She didn't really, and she's not really into Bitcoin or any of this stuff she she wasn't anyways she's kind of on board a little bit more now but um so yeah i had fl flown down for a week and i ended up um checking the weather back home right before i was supposed to fly back and it would look like so cold and so much snow that i asked my wife if i could stay an extra week so i ended up mm -hmm. staying an extra week and i had a rental car so i actually took a road trip in the states i went up to north carolina south carolina and across to georgia i went to see the georgia guidestones and uh um and uh, Jekyll Island, like all these cool places that I've, you know, read about and seen about. I was like, cool, I'm by myself. Nobody's telling me to pull over and pee every five minutes. So I can just go and drive and see some stuff. So that's what I did. And awesome. at the same time, I kind of, that's when I started my channel. Um, and it was just literally just me kind of, you know, introducing myself, kind of venting. And I, I called it living outside the box. And, and it, I thought it was very relatable because, like you said, I, or like I said, I don't really like to put myself in any box. Um, so I, I didn't really get into too much um, detail. I was it was really just kind of introducing myself. There was a lot of so many things going through my mind the last few years that I that I had a hard time articulating with words, um, and so I didn't want to start pushing stuff down people's throats. It was really just okay, s keep it slow. I'll do it at my own pace because um, there's a lot of channels that I follow that, you know, I. I, I find they're too angry or they're just like, you know, so I was trying to do my own thing. So that, that's what I did. And then I happened to just meet somebody at the conference through um, like a tele, one of the telegram chat rooms that was selling their tickets to Anarchapoco. Mm -hmm. um, and I had met uh, Josh uh, Sigurdsson and John Snyson at Bitcoin conference. And they asked if I was going to Anarchapoco. I, I told them that I probably couldn't go um, just because we were, my wife and I were trying to do uh, in vitro um, fertility treatments um, during that time. And I didn't think it was, I thought she was going to be pregnant. So it, I didn't think we were going to be able to go. Mm -hmm. um, so when I got home from Miami, um, it turned out that the, the the treatment didn't work the first time. So I, I just basically said, why don't we go to Mexico? We'll go to this, <laughs> we'll go to this conference. Um, she's not really into it at all. And she was really against it at first. Um, and I said, well, just come down you know, and see that it's, you know, it's not so crazy that you'll see there's really like good people there. And, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll take an extra, we, we actually went for, cause the conference was only four days, but we went for about two weeks. We went a few days ahead of the conference and just had time to ourselves. And then we stayed in about an extra week after the conference. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and she ended up having a great time. Like it's, I wouldn't say she's converted, but she definitely started to see that you know, the things that she thought I was wasting my time on were, you know, a little bit more serious anyways, or that there was a, a lot of people that thought the same way. I'm not just this, you know, random guy, uh, because in my, you know, in our circle of friends back home, I'm, I'm basically the, the only one that has these views or, <laughs> right. um, but at the same time, I'm the only one that's self-employed. Um, most of my friends work for the government or they, you know, they work, you know, they're employees. So, it's understandable. It's uh, I find this is more of a mindset for those that that really just work for themselves and have and are tired of, you know, working working harder and harder every year and making less and less. So, uh, so, so yeah, we ended up um, flying down to Mexico and like I said, we like I actually had time in my life. You know, I got to see all these 
great people that I've been following on YouTube for a long time. I got to meet a lot of people, um, you know, and chat with some of them like Mark Passio and Max Egan. Mm -hmm. Um, I I never, Jeff, like I, I'm not one of these guys that loves, you know, like, like worshiping celebrities or anything like that. So like, I really just found times where these guys were just kind of hanging out by themselves and I just went up and had a small little chat with them. But um, you know, I, I got to chat with Dan Dix for a bit too, and Josh and John and a, a bunch of good guys. Jeff, he didn't seem very approachable, so I didn't, I didn't really bother. Uh, he had security on his ass the whole time. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I never, I didn't really get to meet him. Um, and, and so, yeah, so I kind of like my, my channel that I'd started in January, I kind of, you know, told my, I'd only had maybe about a hundred subscribers when I got Tanner Capoco. And, uh, you know, I told them I was going to this conference and, and then I just decided, Hey, I'll start just taping some of the performances and uploading them to my channel. And maybe that'll help, you know, get some views, um, which it did because by the time I left the conference, I had, uh, you know, or when I got, by the time I got home, I had about 16, 1700 subscribers. So obviously yeah. there was a, a demand for those types of videos. Um, and I'd only uploaded basically maybe I think eight or nine um, talks the ones I saw basically I only saw talks the first two days because the the last two days I was actually um, doing ayahuasca ceremonies okay. off-site with uh, Anarcha Awakening uh, through Macy Tomlin so I was kind of I after the ayahuasca I was kind of checked out of the whole sure. the whole conference thing altogether and I had seen all the people that I really wanted to see um, so yeah, that was it. And I, you know, I got home, I was super stoked. I was, you know, telling all my friends and, you know, I was, I was like, sweet, this was great that I got to get my channel up and running and I got all these new subs and uh, yeah, then I got a, should I get into the, the aftermath or? Yeah. So, so I guess I'll, I'll just, I'll just prep, I guess just say that I, I first found out about what happened to you through, uh, through Derek Bros's channel, the conscious resistance. And um, mm-hmm. I mean, there, you know, Derek just does, does terrific work, and he's he's uh, and he's always been open about um, his conflicts with uh, the inter- organizers of Anarchapulco, um, more more specifically yeah. one, one or two. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, so I I've been following uh, you know what's what the the problems he's been facing. Um, so I saw that video, and uh, then I did a little more digging, uh, put up a post on the fascist book. Um, <laughs> Um, with, I guess, my response to, to Berwick when he commented on it. And um, it, the post kind of uh, blew up. I had to turn off notifications for like two days um, because I, my phone was not. Um, but, uh, and, then, and then, yeah, you, you, comment on, you comment on there, and that's how we got connected. And uh, that's how this, this interview yeah. happened, and I'm, re- I'm really, really glad it did for, for a lot of reasons. But, but yeah, so I, I guess that's how I found out about it. And uh, so, yeah, I, I guess let's go ahead and, and get into it. So, so you uh, got home. You had, you had the videos uploaded. You had a bunch of new subscribers. You were pretty hyped about it. You just had a great time. And uh, then something bad happens. I want you to tell us about, a bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I actually got um, – because I had, I had previously contacted the organizer, Jessica Kill, um, while I was at the conference and it was, it was in regards to the poker game, there was actually a poker game ran the night before the conference started on the 13th. And, um, I had signed up for it like, you know, months in advance, but there was not any, any details, um, for it uh, right up until like, I think it was the 12th where they kind of announced, so this is the buy-in amount. This is where it's happening. Um, are you still, if you're still in send crypto to this and, so I did, and 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 it was like it was a joke of a poker game, which was surprising because I know Jeff's big into poker, and right. I thought you know they said that we have professional players from Mexico City coming in to deal, and literally like it was, it was I think there was even emails after that Jessica acknowledged that it was just a shit show, um, but like the dealers didn't know how to deal, they didn't even I don't even think they knew what Texas Hold'em was. The cards were terrible. Anyways, I so I just sent her a note, just kind of. Not complaining. I didn't want my money back. Like it was, uh, but just say like for next year, maybe you know, there's a few things you guys can improve. And, sure. Um, and so 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 yeah, I had kind of reached out to her. So she already had my contact information on um, Telegram, and at, my name at the time was Jeff from Living Outside the Box or whatever. Um, so I got a message from her like the day after, two days after I got home. Um, I don't, I can't remember the specific dates anymore, but it was, uh, the 22nd, 23rd of February. And she just asked if I was Jeff from living 
outside the box and if we could chat and I said sure no problem I gave her my cell phone number and um uh yeah I told her if she wanted to call she called while I was driving I couldn't talk so we ended up talking that night or the next day um and you know I I'd, I'd read a lot of stuff about this woman ahead of time um not that I was like judging her ahead of time but I had just heard all these stories so when I, I wasn't sure where the conversation was going to go. I My wife was actually pretty excited. She thought that it was going to be like, oh, they're just so happy that you're, you know, promoting the conference. You're getting all these views on YouTube. And um, and I was like, yeah, that's possible. But I don't know. I just have this feeling that it's not going to go the right way. So I actually recorded the conversation, which was not something I normally do, but just just in case, like I wasn't sure if I was going to be threatened or something, so I so I recorded it. I, I haven't even like I haven't shared that with anybody yet. I still just have it. Um, it's not like it's damning, but it just you know it starts to when you put all the things together, it just highlights all the you know the the blatant lying that's been going on from their side since the beginning. So when we spoke, she basically asked me if I could remove all the videos. Um, from my channel that um, they were planning to sell the videos and by me having them up was hurting them, was gonna hurt them uh, financially uh, because they wouldn't be able to sell them. And I had basically said, well, and they were very specific about um, uh, David Icke's talk and uh, Ron Paul's talk, that they had contracts with them or something. Um, and, and I was reluctant, I, like I, I was actually kind of shocked. I didn't even know what to say. Um, but I, I just said, well, you know, like, I'm not going to take your word for any of this, Jessica. Like, I'll, I would, I prefer to speak to Jeff. And I would, you know, I, I think it's fair if you could show me, at least prove to me that, you know, you guys are actually losing money or um, that, you know, these, my videos being up on an, unmon you know, unmonetized channel. Um, if anything, this is actually promoting the conference. This is exactly right. what I said. Um and so I, so I told her I would, I would think about it, but I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd like to speak to Jeff directly to see if this is coming from him or if this is just her, um, because I'd heard from, you know, other people's stories coming out of the conference too, that, you know, she seems to have this control problem and all those things. And so, so many things didn't make sense. Um, uh, and so the next day I didn't, I didn't receive anything. And so I actually made kind of like a response video, um, about that conversation without naming i didn't actually name her but also because that next morning when i woke up the david ike video was removed from my channel it wasn't completely removed but nobody could actually watch it it was still there you could search it it showed up when you search you know anarcho 2019 but the video was said unavailable hmm. so you know it was kind of suspicious you could say um i'm not sure if it was david ike that put pressure on youtube or, or what happened i i have no idea um, so I kind of made this little response video, just, you know, telling my subscribers what happened with that video. And I got this call the night before. Um, and, you know, I kind of tied in some of the speakers talks um, from, you know, that I they had recorded just just stuff that kind of helped, you know, prove my kick because most of these speakers are they, this is what they're saying is like, we need to get this information out. This is not about right. money. This is about just, you know, get them get the message out. Um, and again, like I paid for my ticket to get there. There was no, there was no rules saying that, that we couldn't record. There was no, no there was no rules on the ticket saying we couldn't record. So, um, and, and all they spoke to that had attended, cause this was the first time I attended conference, but everyone I'd spoke to said like, this is, they, they're always looking for people to just get videos up and even yeah. looking back on Jeffrey Tucker, who was the MC looking back on his introduction to the conference, he basically he basically said in one of his videos, like in the introduction, saying like, you know, don't forget to hashtag Anarchapoco in your videos on YouTube and stuff. So like, it was like, I was totally like, this this doesn't make any sense. So I didn't take anything down. I didn't take anything down. And then right, right so after I posted just, let me, that let me step video. In for, for, for one second here. So you, you, you talked yeah. to Jessica one night and uh, you sure. said, let me, let me think about it. Um, and I'd also like to speak with Jeff. And then, and the next day, basically, um, one cha one video got uh, you know, literally, the, literally the next morning. So she, so I mean, right. whether it was her, or whether it was David Ike, what, whatever happened, you didn't even have a chance to even, um, to even really think about this, right? That's right. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Um. So let's continue. I'm sorry. But then, so 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 I made 
right, so right after I made that video, uh, the next day the David Icke video came back up. So uh, I was like, okay, so maybe the, the, obviously they're watching my videos, you know, um, and obviously I had a good message. So I actually made another video just, you know, and, and like reiterating my promotion for the conference and, you know, just, you know, telling my subscribers what the direction of my channel was going and just really thanking Anna Capoco and directing people if they wanted better quality videos of the conference and of all the speakers to go to the, their website and check them out. And, and again, I integrated, you know, some of the speakers, little clips here and there that kind of made a, a case for, for myself. Um, and yeah, and, and so all my videos were back up. And I did receive an email the same day that David Icke video came down. I received an email from Jessica, but it was basically outlining exactly the conversation we had on the phone. So there was no new, you know, she didn't provide any, any of this financial documents or Jeff didn't never reached out to me, mm -hmm. any of that. So I, I just, you know, I didn't even respond to the email. I just, I just kept going and I, I kept making videos and, um, and yeah, and then it was a couple of weeks later where I just woke up one day and my channel was terminated. Uh, and I checked my emails and it was literally copyright strikes and it was clearly showing uh, who issued the copyright strikes and who they were taking down. And, you know, it had Jessica's name all over it. So, mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah. It's, uh, so I started, I, I started reaching out to uh, like a few people in the community that I knew were friends with Jeff. Um, and that I had met and like, like that seemed like good people and like that they were fair minded and I even wrote to Jeff and spoke to Jeff on my behalf. And it's funny because like, I'm not going to divulge their names or the emails back and forth, but it was funny. That, you know, he the way he said it was like Jeff was so against copyright strikes like this has to be this was totally Jessica's thing um, and I only mentioned that because later seeing like Jeff's all his posts all over Facebook like he's basically saying that's decision and you know that's you know that's it was it was all him so it was uh, yeah a lot, of, a lot of stories being thrown out on their side that sound you know, that's, that's what happens when you lie is you track of all your lies um so tell truth and and that's why i made that response video that actually made a video about um and i uploaded it to a new channel called gas man report um and literally within six hours of that video going on to my new channel that new channel was terminated completely and and I got an email from YouTube saying that my channel was terminated due to scam, scam or deceptive business practices. Wow. And that I am I am banned from creating any I can't um, like even I do have another channel that I just watched videos on that you know that's called it's basically called Ga Gas Man, which is my company in in the but I haven't uploaded anything because you know I don't really want to waste any more of my time if I'm just going to upload stuff and it's going to get taken down. So I've just kind of walked away from it for now and just gone back to my regular thing for now and just uh, I'll work on my website eventually because even my website I just kind of made it uh, like I just kind of learned in a day just how to make a basic website and I put all the the videos up because I was going to make this kind of response video and. Uh, yeah, so basically my website is basically useless because all the videos that were linked are all on dead channels now. So right. everything's kind of up in the air right now, but I'll, I'll sure I'll, I'm sure I'll figure something else to do. But that's kind of, yeah, the short version of the story. Hopefully I didn't miss anything too important, but if you got any questions, go right ahead. Yeah, so so I guess the first thing I'll point out is that when I, uh, so I um, put up, I put up uh, one status and um, Berwick responded to it. And his, his response, that's, that's not going to be verbatim. I haven't gone back and found that post. I was banned from YouTube for like three weeks. Or not YouTube, Facebook for like three weeks. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I mean, his response is basically private event, private rules. Um, tell me again how. You know, I actually have a post exactly in front of me. I can read it to you. Yeah, go for it. If you want. So, yeah, he wrote private event. Private rules, asked not to record, did anyway, asked to take it down as we have numerous contracts with people like Ron Paul, David Icke, etc., stating we wouldn't allow video of their speeches. They still didn't take down, we asked YouTube to remove it. Where does scumbags and scammers come in? 
Right. Yeah. And then your re- response. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and and then that's where you know that was the the I guess the the PR stance they decided to take on that, and uh, you know mm-hmm. then people start then attendees start coming out of the woodwork like uh, basically saying, and there were multiple people, multiple people that said there was they did not make anyone aware that there was no filming. And it's an anarchist event. Obviously, you know, you just kind of, you just, you don't ask, you just do it, right? Um, you don't ask to film. Um, yeah. Every other conference or festival um, that I've ever been to, it's like, well, yeah, you know, it's encouraged. You know, do it. Please do it. Um, and so, yeah, mm-hmm. people started coming out of the woodwork. You know, they didn't tell us anything. There were no signs, nothing on the ticket. There was nothing. Um, so, so basically, no. um, obviously, you know, Berwick, they're uh, kind of, uh, <laughs> you know, um, did, we, we had rules. They didn't follow them. How's, how, how's this, you know? make us you know liars and scammers or whatever well um yeah and i mean it's sort of sort of interrupt and and obviously it's because like and again and again my my response which is actually still on my facebook uh post so i'll send you a link to that after so if if any of your you know listeners sure. want to actually see that video and also the ones that i that i mentioned you know the the one i made after david ike's video went down and the one after it came back up, I have those three videos still up on Facebook, um, so I'll send you the links for those after. Definitely. But it's it's funny, you know, that this all came out after I made this, you know, response video, which which it was just literally I was just saying what happened. It wasn't me crying. It wasn't it wasn't uh, um, trying to stir up controversy. Like I I didn't even really want to do it. I was just gonna leave it be. But there was something like just saying like. There's there's something bad in this conference and it needs to be it needs to be exposed and unfortunately it seems like I'm gonna have to be the one that's that's gonna have to say my story which I, I mean I don't I'm glad I did because I I, I see they're, they're, but they're, obviously they're, they're probably hoping that that you would just you know that you just let it die and then they could still go with that like, with, they, that they were just gonna let it die that was probably exactly cool. and I'm, yeah. and now like now the word they're making it seem like that that I had signed something or that like they had asked ahead of time or they had like people saying anything. Like I sat in that the main room for the first two days, basically the full days because the, those were all the speakers I wanted to see. And I was in the front row the whole, the whole time I got there early. Nobody said a word, like even for the David Icke thing, like I was right in front of the guy. Nobody said a word. So, I, I, something is something is still f- f- fishy like the, you know like i don't want to s- jump to all these conspiracies but it, it just seems to me because some of the videos were getting a lot, a lot of traction on youtube it, it's almost like they didn't want people to see them because like you know david ike had like sixty thousand views um mark Passio, max egan had you know 25 30 thousand views um, and I wasn't monetized, and, I, and I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I still think that if if they claim copyright, they could have monetized my videos on my, my channel and still made money off it if that's what it was really about. So I think yes, it was that, literally that just is, to that, that, literally shut down the message. That is, yeah, that is true. Because um, I've uploaded videos before on my channel, and um, thankfully, um, like the this is I had my channel before they implemented the new rules. Like you have to have uh, so many subscribers and so many views before you can monetize. Um, and thankfully, three, four, I guess four years ago now, I put up a video as a really, you know, clickbaity, you know, police encounter thing. And uh, that one has like over yeah. over a million views. So like whenever that happened, I was like, well, that video saved me for my monetization. I don't make a lot off it, but every every couple months or so, I'll get a couple hundred dollar check or something. Um, so that's not that, that's not a bad thing. But yeah, like if I, if I upload yeah. a video to my channel and you, it, I don't know, I, I don't know specifically, but I'm guessing it has to be monetized. Um, so like if I were to upload those Aaron Capulco videos, um, then they could, then they, 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 they would, um, they could, you know, claim copyright for it. And then they would just add that ran on my channel with the money would just go to them. Um, I think the reason that that wasn't an option for you was because your yeah. channel wasn't monetized. So just, uh, an observation. One other thing I wanted to point out too, because this is what really pissed me off looking through all those responses was that. Um, and Berwick even admitted mm-hmm. this in other in other posts. Like, uh, okay, maybe we didn't do as good of a job as we should have, you know, telling people not to film. So, like, it, they were backpedaling just basically the days after um, on you know what what actually happened, which is always which is how it always works out um, with things like this. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. like, they they fucked up and didn't make the rules explicit, um, and then exactly. they they took it out on you anyway. Exactly. Like, what, what they, they should have done. I was. 
Yeah, and and what they should have done, just like I guess coming at it from like a you know like you're you're a you know a friendly you know you're 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 a you're, you're you know you're a, a friendly uh, you know uh, you know I'll put you know anarchist in quotes like you're there you're you're, you're there for the community and such, and so uh, you know they fucked up and they they should have just said mm -hmm. uh, you know <clears throat> we're really you know we're uh, you know in the future you know um, no filming and such we made the mistake here. Um, and just kind of you know walk away you know walk away from it uh, you know that way like they made the mistake right um like a, just for, for example just a, you know, as, as a little bit of a tangent um i run uh, libertarian Liber anti publications and i was getting it like I, I closed uh, one deal this week and uh i forgot to mention that there's a that there was an agent fee um because he wanted to use he wanted to use my graphic designer for illustrations um i forgot to mention that in the first email and i said uh um, and I kind of re reached out. He's like, so what's the, what's it going to cost? And I said, well, I didn't mention this to you in the first email. Um, so yeah, there won't be an agent fee because I, I didn't make it explicit. Um, when we kind of speak yeah. and work on it. Um, that's, I think that's how they yeah. should have approached it too, is damn, we screwed up. Well, I guess we'll have to, we'll have to eat this one and learn in the future. Yeah, exactly. That was, that was my thing. And that's kind of exactly what I said at the end of my response video, which I'll send the link to that. Sure. That's what it was like. Literally, that they they did screw up. If that was their intentions, um, to to have nobody record, which was you know would have been completely new for this year, and it, it coincides with Jessica Kill being this new you know producer for the conference. Um, yeah, just own it, and yeah, but to, to again, and it it seems just so petty to crush such a small channel. Um, which I mean, I don't even care about the channel to be honest, but I'm wondering how the hell they were able to, to kill the second channel. So like, quick. Yeah. So quick. And it wasn't like, like I, these were just the videos of me responding. And then I get this weird uh, email from YouTube saying that it was for spams, scams, or deceptive business practices. When I had only had like three videos on the channel, which were the three videos I'll send you links to, which are still on my Facebook. Mm -hmm. It was basically just explaining the story of what happened to my old channel. And then I'm banned from YouTube forever because of that. Like it doesn't, I, I don't know if Kill has, you know, contacts in YouTube. I, I'm not sure. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I, obviously, I, I don't. It's, I don't know. But, it's weird. Uh, it's weird. Yeah, I, I guess what what I do know is yeah. basically from from Derek Bros's videos, and there was uh, there was one before. This would have been maybe a week or two before the conference, I think. And um, he was having issues with, and I'm not revealing. I guess it's just public on YouTube, so I'm not revealing anything private or anything here. Um, mm -hmm. But he was trying to get his. Uh, he was trying to you know premiere a documentary. He was trying to do all these things or do do a couple things actually. Give a talk and you know premiere a documentary and. He had, you know, issue after issue with Jessica, said he could, I guess, said he could do it, then, you know, back, backtrack, said, oh, no, actually, you, you can't do that. Um, pretty much a nightmare um, is kind of how he explained it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess he also brought up, uh, you know, Jessica's, I, I guess, uh, she has pictures of the White House, she has pictures of politicians, she, um, but, you know, in the video, Bro, Bro, or, uh, Bro says, you know, Burke swears she, she's an ANCAP now. Um, she's, he swears that she is. Um, so I, I don't know. It seems to all, like, a, a lot of, most of the issues I've heard with Anarchapulka this year was basically, um, I guess the the one, I guess uh, the main variable that changed, right? Um, so that's, um, yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, that's that's definitely unfortunate. But I guess I'm not really surprised because um, I, I don't remember if this was um, I mean, this might have been the first post I made that sparked this entire thing, but um, that sparked that shit show of a thread. Um, <clears throat> but basically, uh, um, mm -hmm. it's uh, they. At an anarchist at an anarchist conference, conference, they had three status as the headliners: Ron Paul, who's not an anarchist; Judge yeah. Napolitano, who's not an anarchist; and David Ike, who's not an anarchist. Um, and mm -hmm. so, like, uh, so, so there's that, and 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 then there's also a, um, a Ron Paul uh, intellectual property dispute that he took to the United Nations. Actually, um, he sued his own supporters over uh, the RonPaul.com domain. Um, so, like, my yeah. I think I made a snotty remark, like, uh, well, I guess they're in good company then. Um, because I, I don't know, like yeah. even, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. And I guess another thing that comes to mind too is they failed to uphold their con. If if this is all true, um, you know what they've said that they have contracts with David Icke and, and Ron Paul, then um, they failed to uphold their end of the contract um, with them by not making rules exactly. Explicit. So um, I mean, it, no matter how you look at this, I can only see them as being in the wrong. Yep, and not wanting to own it at all. Just just yeah. And again, th this is still, regardless if they think they're going to get out ahead of this, like, it's not like I'm going to continue to pursue this. Like, I, I really have better things to do, to be honest. But 
um, just all the people that have seen the video. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are going on like, hmm, maybe I don't want to spend my money here. Like, is this, you know, is this just a waste of, you know, like, it's a great time. I had a great time, but I didn't. And like I I said in the video, like, go to learn new stuff. I just went to meet people that, you know, think the same way and, you know, have a great time in Mexico. But um, I don't know, just if this is the way it's going to run. Like, I'll I'll definitely won't spend money to go back. Uh, I, I'm sure I won't be allowed to go back even uh, uh, even if I wanted to. But, I mean, that's that's okay. This is this definitely it just helped open my eyes even more to say, like, you really have to be careful with, uh, with everyone you deal with, even people you think that are on your side or in your group you're you know in your community uh uh who knows yeah. who really knows yeah yeah that's true and uh, as i said and earlier on uh, the, the two videos prior to this one on on acapulco and, and kind of the community there um you know like uh, and obviously this doesn't have a direct tie to um to anarchapulco or the or its organizers other than they got up in front of the media the day that the uh the day that something happened the the, the murder of john galton um but um, other than that, there, there's really no connection. But um, I mean, uh, yeah, the, the two other videos, there's ones like problems in building a community. Um, like I, I, I unfortunately, I think a lot of people that go there to live there, um, like they kind of have, you know, the ba they, they understand the theoretical, the, the, you know, the theoretical part of, you know, uh, private arbitration and dispute resolution organizations and such. But when you actually go there and there's disputes, like it's real life shit. No one knows how to deal with it. Yeah. No one has any idea how yeah. to deal with that shit in reality. Um, and then there was a second video that was Patreon only for um, for probably a month or so. Actually, no, it was probably more like two, uh, more like a month and a half. And it was called uh, "Accumulating An Accumulating Anarchist uh, Warnings." And I mean, I I, I kind of did, um, you know, when I was there, um, you know, I said, you know, you could probably find you could probably find, find some more freedom and become more, you know, more invulnerable to coercion um, in some ways in, in Acapulco. Um, but I'm kind of, I, I'm definitely changing my mind here now. Like, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying I'm never going to go back there. I mean, it's a beautiful, absolutely beautiful place. Um, but as far as the community there, um, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. I feel like just associating with some of those folks, even not even the bigger ones, um, just just kind of the the way that things are handled there. Um, I mean, a lot of a lot of tragedies could, could have been prevented, you know, beforehand um, if uh, if if things were you know dealt with in reality, you know, when they when they happen. So I guess that's just kind of my my, my my take on it, you know, more generally, and also just kind of my my, my uh, uh, retraction um, that I wouldn't recommend Venuans go to Acapulco um, to join, you know, to to to, to join a community. Um, I certainly would not recommend that um, anymore. I think uh, you put yourself at much more risk, uh, or you put yourself at least in, in more risk um, in, in in some situations. So um, done rambling. Now you can respond if you have anything. There's no question there. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't know what else more I have to say. I mean, yeah, it's it, it's 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 too bad. I mean, it, it is too bad that, that uh, the way things went down. And I like I I gave Jeff many of opportunities just to contact. Like I'm a reasonable guy. I I wasn't looking for fame with my channel. I wasn't looking to cause you know drama or anything like that. Like I reached out to him every way that I thought. I I knew how, and when finally he was included in the email threads uh, between uh, his other friend that I had met and and spoke with uh, that reached up to both him and Jessica, um, you know, I sent him this, uh, personal messages just saying, here's my phone number. If you want to talk, like, like I would have been willing to come to some kind of mutual agreement or, you know, I'll take some of the videos down or, but just the way that, you know, that just to, you know, force me basically just take the do what we say or or else and again like the threat was okay, okay or else what you're gonna make yourselves look bad like that's what i thought at the front of my mind and sure enough it's it's not like i was trying to bait the hook but they took the bait and they just literally hung themselves um and and they're the ones that you know they're trying to and it's so wildly you know they're saying that they, there was these rules and that I broke the rules and I ignored the rules. And so whatever, like, I don't, you know, pe most people, and unfortunately just reading through a lot of these threads that, yeah, most people, people just, you know, believe when put into the, the full story and find, you know, so it's too bad. At, um, I guess that's just kind of the reality of the world we live in too, is that people don't take the time to really dig into a story and, and Facebook makes it really hard to actually, um, 
to follow a thread, like you said, right. like it really gets out of control to really follow who said what and what timing. And I think that's done on purpose just to uh, confuse everybody. So, right. Yes. Yeah, it, and it's, that was, it's, that was, it's that was bad, my comment I, too. Know, I, again, I, I, I'm, I always try to find a bit of things. Oh yes, yeah. sorry, sorry, ahead, sorry, sorry to jump in there. Um, I was just gonna say, like, that's like I had people. It was the same, like, it was the same response. Private, private event, private rules. Um, you know, that was just a shitty thing that the guy did. You know, putting the videos, and like, I, I, like, I, I knew as like when the thread blew up. Um, I, I just kind of had a default copy and paste response. Like, I know you aren't. I know you didn't read the three thousand comments in this thread, or however the hell, however many there were. Um, so, and I don't like. I don't expect you yeah. to. But here's the you know the short update information here, and then people respond. Oh, okay, that's a little different then. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I that's why I wanted to get you on the podcast. So like, there there'd be a, an outlet where they couldn't actually take it down. <laughs> I mean, you said it's up on Facebook, but to, to, yeah. to, to, to give you another outlet. And I mean, this also highlights too, and I've dealt with this in the past when it comes to um, whether it's libertarians or just people that I, I guess just, um, or I don't know, I'll just call them libertarians for, for the time being. They're really popular folks, have a lot of followers who, uh, you know, the followers think they can, they, they, that they can do no wrong. So anytime something happens, um, it's automatically go going to the defense of them, as if they need it anyway, right? Um, but, you know, it's automatically yeah. going to their defense. Whatever evidence evidence comes out, um, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, they'll just continue to, to, to blindly follow no matter, you know, scandal after scandal. doesn't matter. Um, they'll just continue to, uh, you know, continue to uh, remain there. And at a point, um, like I've been, uh, I guess, in the Ericus community uh, doing, doing, po doing podcasts and radio shows for, I guess, uh, it, over four years now. Um, yeah, I guess almost four, or over four years now. And, you know, it's something I've come across uh, time and time again. Like you have solid, you have, you have, you know, bulletproof evidence that this person's a piece of shit, bulletproof evidence. And, you know, you, you give it to somebody yeah. and it doesn't matter. Um, it just doesn't matter at all. Um, so, um, unfortunately, man, like I, I hate to, I hate to sound like a pessimist here. This interview, like they're going to be the folks, the, the folks, folks that listen to this podcast will be like, well, obviously, obviously they're pieces of shit. Like there's no, there's no doubt. Um, but like, uh, we're not going to yeah. re reach a, you know, a super large audience that's, uh, um, you know, like where, where this stuff's all going to stop. Um, it's not. Um, but I, I do think it's, it's important to at least get this I, out there in, in a, and, you know, an audio format, um, more structured and, uh, um, and, and that sort of a way. Yeah, man, that's, yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, I, 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 I know how it goes. I've spent many countless hours and days, weeks just trying to wake up, you know, like my own family and friends just with like, you know, you know, nine eleven, whatever. You can literally put, put stuff right in their face, and mm -hmm. they just don't want to see it. Like you said, it it can be with related to anything; it doesn't matter. So, yeah, I'm used to it, and I've just kind of accepted. You know, I used to get pretty angry and uh, pessimistic, even like I mean, it's, it's hard not to when you when you see what's happening in the world. But I still try to stay positive, and I try to take positive things out of everything that happens. So, you know, maybe this uh, for me, this was just a chance for me to get my ass back in gear and just start putting my head down with my business and concentrate on that for now. And while I'm busy, you know, cause I was, I was almost neglecting it for the last six months, eight months. I was just, you know, not in into it at all. I really wanted to start a YouTube channel or just, just start doing something. Um, and unfortunately that's not, you know, and that's not going to happen at the moment. I'm, I'm hoping that there's new platforms that come out that offer what YouTube has, but, that's more decentralized but i i don't know if if they just have too much control over the game now it's you know it's too late for these new platforms well, who knows i don't want to say it never uh, it'll never happen but it's it's yeah it's definitely uh, like david fighting goliath um and that's even a joke i said to jessica and jeff through emails of saying like you know i knew i was fighting uh goliath before and now i'm fighting another goliath like it's mm -hmm. it's ridiculous this is totally ridiculous that uh yeah and uh i, I honestly I, I truly just felt bad you know maybe maybe jeff is uh cointel or controlled opposition i i don't know I, it's it's hard to say but it just i i actually felt bad like i couldn't believe this was actually happening like it, it was so surreal that i was like man this really looks bad for them like this really looks bad for them and i'm like i'm just about just saying the truth now and just speaking the truth regardless of who who it hurts um and I, I think that's what's lacking in this community and, you know, in, in general is that people don't want to call out people in their own group 
even when they, you know, something bad goes, something goes wrong. Um, but that's what we need to do. We need to start, you know, growing a pair and calling out the people that we're closest to when we, we see them doing something wrong. Yes. Um, so it was a good, this, this was actually a good, you know, lesson for me that I kind of proved to myself that, yes, I can, um, you know, regardless of who it is, just tell the truth and um, let the chips fall where they may. And that's, that's basically what I've done. Right. So there, so, so there, yeah, there, there are two comments I have. And the first one is um, there was, uh, and I guess in um, one of the recent episodes of the Vani podcast, uh, read a, an unedited, uh, you know, excerpt or chapter from Ben Stone's new book um, that he gave us permission to release, obviously. But he said something about, and I'm going to badly paraphrase, but you know, libertarians have no problem, you know, like, uh, you know, when it comes to, when it comes to, uh, um, to cops, they expect cops to root out the bad ones, right? You know, um, they expect them, you know, like, uh, you mm-hmm. know, one, one bad apple, you know, spoils, spoils a bunch or whatever, you know, if, if they would just call out the bad ones, then, you know, this, this would all be taken care of. But when it comes to people yeah. in our circles, um, you know, it's, it's just, it, as you said, um, you know, it's, there's a reluctancy because <clears throat> it's seen as kind of this, uh, you know, we, we all need to be united. Well, um, uh, no, <clears throat> um, I mean, sure, that, that'd be nice. Uh, that'd definitely be nice. But we don't want to be united with people who um, do the sorts of things that, uh, like, like what happened to you. We don't want to. We don't want to associate with people. I'm, you know, I'm going to say we, not not necessarily saying it's your point of view too. Just generally speaking, um, we don't yeah. want to be associated with yeah. liars, scumbags, criminals. Uh, criminals is in like violators, person, property. Um, I mean, those people have to be rooted out of the community, right? Um, they have to be, um, and a lot of people don't. Um, they just don't want to uh, to rock the boat and do that. Um, they'd rather just uh, you know go along to get along, and uh, that's that's certainly a, a, a bad a bad route to take. Um, and the other point I have is that um, I've said it you know many times before, like on this podcast, self operational media, um, or you know just uh, even if it's not self operational media, like like uh, you know giving people you know strategies to, to live free and all that. Um, I know that for me with, with my development, starting starting my at least acknowledge. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I think there's a little latency. <laughs> you there, Jeff? Oh, no, we're on a bit of a delay. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 I think there's a a little bit of a latency delay here. Um, but yeah, the the, the second thing I, I was gonna I was gonna mention was that. Yeah. I'm oh, here. I'm here. I'm just. I'll let you finish your second comment. Okay. Okay, and hopefully, hopefully it'll clear up. Uh, uh, the latency will clear up by then. But, um, um, but yeah, I know, like with with my personal development, starting starting my radio show back when I was you know twenty one or twenty two, um, four years I guess yeah four years ago. <clears throat> um, I mean, I I didn't know anything at that point. Um, I I I, I had nothing. Um, but re- what really helped with with my personal development was being able to you know um, whether it was YouTube or, or uh, you know the radio platform I was on, being able to you know just just talk through these ideas and weed out the bad ones, and um, try to, I guess, uh, fi- figure out, uh, um, you know, uh, what I wanted to do, uh, w- with my life, at least in some sort of, uh, some sort of a way. And also try to, try to, <clears throat> I don't know, um, get my, uh, my, my thinking clear. And, uh, you know, it's just really unfortunate that, <clears throat> you know, like you, you, you took a, you took a risk. I mean, it's not an easy thing to do, um, to, you know, become a content creator, especially within the realm that's, uh, you know, that's, that's what that we're both in. Um, so it's just really unfortunate that, you know, they, with, with, you know, one fell swoop, they kind of took the wind out of your sails and <clears throat> now you're just kind of stepping away from it. Maybe there'll be something in the future. Um, maybe there won't, I don't know. Um, but you know, it's just really, really unfortunate because I think with content creation, um, or whether it, whether it's you know writing or podcasts or radio show or w- whatever it is, um, it really really does help to um, you know further uh, one's intellectual development and, and also um, I think it's just an overall overall really really good thing. So yeah, abso- absolutely. Um, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Like I. I... I mean, this starting this channel was actually quite a big step for me. Because I, I mean, I'm most for the channel, um, but I was in a really good place on that trip in my in in the states and. And I just, you know, I felt like I was letting myself down 
for not, you know, speaking things that I that I wasn't 100 percent sure I knew was right, but at least talking, getting it out there, and you know, and I started, you know, getting a, a little following, so I could see I was on the right path, and I, I felt good just getting things out. Um, and I was I surprised myself, like I was I'm not the best speaker, but I I definitely surprised myself after watching my first video I was like oh that, that wasn't that bad and I just kept getting a little bit better and I was still doing my business too and I felt like I was full time into it but um, and, and I'm not like I'm not saying I'm going to walk away 100% but for now I'm just going to concentrate on what I'm, I'm my phone doesn't stop ringing for my job so I just will concentrate on that and next time I get you know some downtime I'll, I'll work on my website and try to find a platform um, you know, that I can just at least upload my videos to that, that I know won't get pulled down and just put them, uh, everything on my own website. Uh, I think that's going to be the way for most people, uh, that are really, you know, producing truthful content because I mean, I've, I even hated being, like I joked on my old channel saying like, you know, like I kind of feel like a hypocrite uploading to YouTube because I hate them so much because I've yeah. seen them censoring, you know, really good channels. Uh, even with Facebook, like I, I, I hate Facebook because I, I saw the shadow banning thing happening years ago. That's why I, I completely walked away from Facebook for a couple of years, and I only got back on to just kind of build up. And because again, I did, I did spend all my time and effort. Uh, it wasn't for nothing though, because I, I did learn a lot about myself um, and just. Um, you know, learning how to edit videos and things like that, and and it was something that I felt passionate about, and it was nice to do something that I, you know I really wanted to do. So I, I'm sure at some point I'll get back into it and create content and um, even writing. That's uh, I'm definitely a stronger writer than speaker, so maybe I'll actually get into some writing and get back into reading more. And uh, yeah, so I, I'm not sure what the future brings, but for now I'm just uh, I'll take this sign. Uh, that that wasn't exactly where I was supposed to be at that moment. So, and, uh, you know, I'll try not to get too negative about it. And, yeah, like I laid out my story and I, you know, I told the truth the way that everything happened to me. So I, I feel good about myself. Um, I, and I, I think that's a problem with some people, um, you know, that refuse to acknowledge um, previous mistakes is that they keep piling up. They keep piling up. Up and eventually you're just going to so that's kind of advice for Jeff that you know I think that's maybe why he's got a bit of a drinking problem sometimes and you know I think he's covering up, covering up a lot of stuff um, because again I, I'm a guy that digs so once this happened to me I started digging into Jeff's past a bit and there's a lot of skeletons in his closet that I don't think he's really acknowledged or he just keeps burying them deeper and deeper so uh, it's someone to catch up with him so um I do, I do actually, you know, I do pray for him because um, I, I do think he's a good guy at heart. Uh, so I hope, hopefully, he just kind of, um, you know, let's let's go of his ego a little bit, and, and uh, yeah, he gets in a better place because it's, it's too bad because he was, you know, I mean, he created this. It was a really good conference. It was amazing having all these people together. So it's it's too bad this has happened this year, but right. who knows what will happen in the future? We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I certainly respect that uh, um, that that point of view, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, this isn't going to uh, um, this this uh, what ha what happened to you won't be the uh, the end of content creation. Because I, I, like we we've discussed, I think it's um, good for good for a lot of reasons, uh, and and one of those just being therapeutic. I, I joked with uh, my co-host of this podcast. Um, it had been like uh, I don't know a month or so since we recorded. This would have been last year sometime, and I was like, nothing like some some good podcast therapy. Like it's uh, it's it's definitely a a really really great thing for for a lot of reasons. So. Um, I'm glad to hear you'll 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 get back into it at, at, at some point. So, I guess to to, to kind of close this out, um, I, you don't have I you kind of been mentioning that you don't have things set up uh, set up yet. Um, but um, uh, is there, are there any uh, websites or anything you'd like to plug um, before uh, before I let you go? Or I, I guess uh, just any other other uh, general closing thoughts? Um. Well, I guess, uh, I mean, I do have the site is, is is up, but it's kind of like dead, like the video links are all dead. So I, I you know, I spent literally like maybe three hours creating it. Um, um, so it, it's, uh, but in the future, hopefully it'll be a place because that my, my existing business is Gas Man. Um, so if people need HVAC uh, services in the Ottawa area in uh, Canada, uh, they can go to 
www.gasmanottawa.com. Um, and then my, you know, my other life is gasmanreport.com. Um, nothing there yet, but hopefully I'll have some time to actually build a decent, decent page and, and be able to get some stuff out. Um, cause I know people are looking for just real, real people that are, you know, not bought and paid for and just, you know, trying to get a truthful message out. So, um, and I even, you know, I run, run business that way too. So I seem to be pretty busy because people just look for honest people. So mm-hmm. I've always tried to live my life that way. So um, I do appreciate you having me on. It was nice to chat. I, I'm sorry it took so long to get this together, and I probably have missed some like important points. But um, but I will send you the links um, um, to my Facebook those videos. So if people want to check out the actual kind of timeline of mm-hmm. those videos and the last one the one that's an hour that's the one that basically got my second channel pulled down and me permanently banned from youtube which is funny because yeah it's got to be the the uh the craziest uh, uh story of somebody getting terminated forever from youtube for nothing really for by a, yeah caused by nothing. a bunch of anarch- so. caused by some anarchists which is even even worse <clears throat> so um, but yeah, I, I certainly appreciate uh, appreciate your time and uh, your, your willingness uh, to, to come on and, and uh, you know tell your story and also um, that uh, you know you've you've, you've uh, I guess uh, um, had the courage to do so because a lot of folks uh, would have kind of just uh, let this uh, go under the table. So um, I, I certainly do appreciate that and I'll put all those links uh, in the show notes. Uh, so thanks again for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. No problem, Shane. You have a great one. Talk yep, you to you. Too. Yep, you too, sir. Um, all right, so, um, and uh, for, for the listeners out there, if you're looking for a Freedom Festival that doesn't use status measures against you, please do come out to the 7th Annual Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest uh, in Delton, Michigan. Uh, it will be happening uh, June 20th to June 24th at the beautiful Circle Pine Center. Uh, this will be, uh, I think, my fifth year going, and it's uh, always an incredible time. Uh, I'll be giving another talk on Vanu uh, this year, and I uh, would love to see more Vanuans out there. Uh, so for more information or uh, to register, just visit mplfest.org. Again, mplfest.org. Uh, so yeah, thanks for tuning in, tuning in everyone. And uh, always remember, Bonnie was yours for the making. Until next time. Is it possible to create pockets of freedom where personal autonomy is respected? In the novella, Hashtag Agora, Daniel LaRusso finds out the answer firsthand. After discovering Bitcoin, he becomes immersed in the cypherpunk underground. Encryption, ghost pads, temporary autonomous zones, and much more. He learns the benefits of freedom, of these tools for self-liberation, and how truly free individuals could conduct their affairs outside of the servile society. Based on real individuals in modern-day Berlin, Germany, Hashtag Agora gives you a practical representation of how freedom pioneers can carve out pockets of freedom in an otherwise enslaved world. Get your paperback copy today by visiting tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. And for more titles like this, please search for Liberty Under Attack publications on Amazon.